All right, so in 7.2, we're going to be finding maximum and minimum values for the feasible region, um, which sounds kind of scary, but we're going to be given, for the first several, we're going to be given the corner points. So you can see on my screen that I have this lovely little polygon, and if I make it bigger, um, basically what was done was we had four different lines graphed, and then this was the feasible region, and we erased everything around it. So there are one, two, three, four corner points. And there's something called the corner point theorem that says all maximum and minimum values for a feasible region will occur at a corner point. So they've given us the coordinates of the corner points. And they've also given us an objective function. In other words, this is what we are trying to maximize or minimize. So my objective function is z equals 6x plus 9y. Okay, and I want to find a maximum value, and I want to find a minimum value. So I am going to use the coordinates that they gave me. So my coordinates are going to be a 2, 1, a 4, 8, um, an 8, 6, and a 9, 2. Okay, so when I work this through, bigger, okay, when I work this through, I'm just going to sub in my x's and my y's, and I'm going to figure out which gives me a maximum value or a minimum value. So if I sub in an x of 2 and a y of 1, x of 2 plus a y of 1, that gives me 12 plus 9, and 12 plus 9 is 21. So that's what I get for the first corner point. The second corner point gives me an x of 4 plus a y of 8. So that gives me 24 plus 72. And 24 plus 72 is going to be 96. Okay. And then I got an 8, 6. So x of 8 plus y of 6 gives me 48 plus 54. And that gives me 102. And then the final one is 9, 2. So 6 times 9 plus 9 times 2 gives me 54 and 18. And 54 and 18 is 72. Okay, so we have found our values. Which one is the biggest? Well, this is the biggest because it's 102. So that's my maximum. Which one is the smallest? The smallest is 21. And that's my minimum. So my minimum value and my maximum value. Okay. So minimize. All right. So we now know what that is. So let's do it again. We've got this little polygon going on here. My objective function is going to be z equals 0.30x plus 0.75y. And I am given five different coordinates. So I've got 0, 0, 0, 5. I've got 3, 10, 7, 7. And I've got 9, 0. All right. So let's start with this because 0 is the easiest. So go bigger. All right. So if I sub in zeros, I'm going to get 0 plus 0 is 0. Okay, if I shove in 0, 5, uh, this times 0 is 0, plus 0.75 times 5 is going to be 375. Okay, shove in a 310, so I'll get 0.3 times 3 plus 0.75 times 10, which gives me 8.4. Evaluate at 7, 7, 0.75 times 7, and I get 735. And then 9, 0 is going to give me 2.7. And so which one is the biggest? This one is the biggest, so he's my maximum. Which one is the smallest? He's my smallest, so he's my minimum. Okay, so pretty straightforward. I'm going to minimize that. 
Let's try it again. So my objective function is z equals 0.35x plus 0.5y. And my points are 0, 0, 0, 3, 3, 8, 7, 6, and 9, 0. Okay, so we have, okay, well, if I zero everything out, it's going to give me a zero. If I do zero, three, I'm going to get 1.5. If I do three, eight, so 0.35 times three plus 0.5 times eight gives me 505. Use seven and six, so 0.35 times seven plus 0.5 times six gives me 545 and then use 9 0 so 0 0.35 times 9 is 315 so which one is your biggest your biggest is going to be this one so that's your maximum and then what's your smallest your smallest is this one so that's your minimum okay let's try it again maybe all right, so this time use the graph to the right, which shows a, a region of feasible solutions. Use this region to find maximum and minimum values of the given objective functions and the locations of these values on the graph, which means we're going to do the exact same thing four times with these four points. Okay, so the first one, our objective function is z equals 4x plus 3y. And I'm actually just going to do the first one with you because you can fill, figure out the other ones. All right. And when I look at these points, I've got a point of 0, 8. I've got a point at 1, 4. I've got a point at 5.5, 1. And I've got a point at 12, 0. So subbing these values in, 4 times 0 plus 3 times 8 is 24. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 times 4 is 12. 4 and 12 is 16. 4 times 5.5, oops, that's not right, is 22, plus 3 is 25. And 4 times 12 is 48, plus 0 is 48. So what's your minimum value? Well, my minimum value is 16, and it occurred, you can't see a thing of what I am doing. Hang on, look at everything I just did for you. All right, so my minimum value is 16, and it occurs at the point 1, 4. My maximum value is 48, and it occurs at the point 12, 0. So the only thing different on this one is you're going to have to tell me what point generated your maxes and your mins. So this is your minimum, and this is your maximum. So now you have to do that three more times with, minimize, with uh, B and with C and with D, okay? So let's look at number five. All right, so number five, we're going to go out and we're going to um, find the points. And so what I would like for you to do, because I'm sharing my screen with you, is first of all, I'm going to write these down so I'm not flipping around. So I'm going to maximize z equals 6x plus 4y. And my constraints are a 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 6. 4x plus y is less than or equal to 6. And then x is greater than or equal to 0, and y is greater than or equal to 0, which again simply means that we're dealing with quadrant 1. So what I want you to do is go to Desmos, okay, desmos.com. And there's probably going to be a whole bunch of little uh, inequalities over here already. You can just X those out. And so what I'm going to do 
is just drag this thing over so that I'm in quadrant one. And I'm just going to start plotting these things. So I've got a 2x, 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to. Well, I need a less than or equal to. So come over here and you'll have um, this little keypad, which when you poke it, it pops up. You can also hide it. See, I hit it. Now I'm going to show it. So I need that to be less than or equal to 6. Okay, and it shows me this over here. So just hang on a second because we're fixing to fix it. All right, I also have a 4x plus a y. So 4x, oops, sorry, that's wrong. All right, I need another one. All right, so for all I did was click in that spot and it popped up. So 4x plus y is less than or equal to 6. So less than or equal to 6. Okay, do it again. And I've got x is greater than or equal to 0. And I've got y is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so now I'm going to hide my keypad. And I'm going to come here, over here, and I'm going to find the overlaps. Okay, so I want to zoom in on this so I can find my overlaps. So if you'll notice, this little polygon right here is my overlap. So I need this point right here, which is 0, 2. Okay. So I need the point 0, 2. I need this point, which is 0, 0. So I need 0, 0. I need this point, which is 1.50. 1 1.50. And then I need this point right here, which we're going to have to be creative with. So if you'll notice, going from here to here is in increments of 5. So this is a 1.2 will take me up to here. And that's also at a 1.2. So that point is 1.2, 1.2. Okay, which I will write down in just a moment. So you have some place to go to, um, to find these and to graph it. And then you'll just have to zoom in and read it. A little bit better now let me see if I can braille mode is off all right axis numbers go away go smaller way all right so I'm trying to see if there's a spot where I can go where it will label everything and I'm not seeing that um anyway ooh, wait what's this oh no okay all right, so you can add them, you can delete them, but bottom line, if you zoom in far enough, you'll be able to see where those cross. It's not gonna be anything scary. So um, that is how you do the last few, and we are still sharing the screen. So let's look at this. So there, there's that one. You're gonna find the maximum value. So you just found your points, just pulling them off the graph. So there's one, two, three, four. And this is what we use to make the graph. And now there's your objective function. So just evaluate those and find your maximum value and your minimum. And then do it again. Okay. And then do it again, but twice. Okay. So the rest of it, just go out to desmos.com and uh, evaluate those. Make sure you use the correct inequalities, find the points on all the overlaps, and then you will be able to find uh, the answers that you're looking for. So that is 7.2.